Next on MTV, can you believe it? Love Island is meant for an adult audience. Love Island may contain sexually oriented content. Love Line. Viewer discretion advised. Good evening and welcome to Love Line. Tonight's special guest, Kathy Griffin. I am Diane Byrne here on the Man of Love Line. Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. I could see something coming. I could just oh, see, it. Yeah. Yeah, I could see it. I don't know what I they threw put one in of that those uh, typo kicks. I watch <laughs> a lot of late night TV. <laughs> So, you know, it's, it's really funny every once in a while. If I watch enough infomercials, I'll start doing whatever they're doing on the infomercial. Oh, really? Oh, Did really? you start removing the hair from your legs that will never come back again? No, no, but I did do my <laughs> bikini line. Oh, oh more Big fun. mistake, boys. <laughs> big mistake. <laughs> no, but every once in a while, after, like, watching enough of those uh, Tai Bo commercials, those uh, kickboxing commercials, I, you know, put my cigarette down, <laughs> put my cocktail down, I'll stand up my bathrobe, in my uh, black socks and I'll throw like a kick <laughs> and then I'll like clutch my groin and sit back down again. <laughs> you know, see, Drew, you go to bed immediately when the show's over. Oh, yes. I got to stay up to like uh, four in the morning. You're just too revved up. I, I, don't, I don't know what it is. I, and when I'm out here, I barely have a pulse, but then I get home, I get all revved up. <laughs> I, I don't know what that is either, yeah. but it's certainly true. <laughs> Believe me, me and the producers wish, wish we could swap that energy around. <laughs> so, all right. Oh, I got my card. Yeah, had it in uh, here. Uh, what are we going to do? Drew's going to the audience, right? You're going to talk yeah. to the people. We'll We're going to take, take some, some questions yeah. from the people in the audience. Calls We're going to take some calls from the uh, phone. We got a guest. What else? Oh yeah, Kathy Griffin is here from uh, right. Suddenly Susan. I don't know if you know enough, but Kathy and I have had an illicit relationship that's going on for a long time. You and Kathy have had what? Nothing. Kathy Whoa. looked at me about five minutes ago in the dressing room and goes, "How much hotter am I now than when you first met me?" <laughs> <laughs> Pretty. You went Pretty, to a party at her degree, house huh? at Christmas, didn't I you? I went to her party. Yeah, I've known Kathy for like ten years. So uh, it's nice to see you. She's doing well for herself. Mm. And I'm sure she'd say the same thing about me. All right. <laughs> Ruby. Hi, okay. When I was 17, I was seeing this guy, right? And um, we never had sex, but we did fool around. And he would fondle my breasts, and he would suck on them. And one time he was like, you know, when I'm doing this, I'm getting breast milk. And I thought he was just being stupid because I was a virgin at the time, so I'd never been pregnant. But this past summer, I was seeing someone completely different, and he said the same thing happened with him. So I even tried doing it myself to see what happened, and I tasted something, too. So, like, what I want to know is... How did you do that? Well, yeah, um, that could be good. <laughs> that means you have big breasts, well, right? Yeah, they're like 36 D, so I just took one in my hands and just kind of bent down. Oh. I, wish I mean, I, I could tasted get something. Stuff. I don't know if it was milk, but it was something. So I just want to know, you know, what's causing this. All right, Ruby. Uh, hey, you have not been pregnant recently? Never. Never been pregnant. And no. you're de definitely not pregnant now? No. Right. Are you on any medication? No. Uh, any thyroid problems in the past? Anything like that? Not that I know of. Have you I've been never, you know, no doctors ever told me about anything like that. But so. you've had your blood tested, this sort of thing. You've been doing okay yeah, physically. Yeah, no. yeah. As far as I know, I'm perfectly healthy. You okay. know, no here, mental here the, problems. No, no. I, it's not, not, we're not going that direction. No. Here, here, are the, here are the the common reasons for it. One, number one is medication. Mm -hmm. Number two is thyroid conditions. Three would be something called a prolactinoma, which is a tumor in the pituitary gland. Uh -huh. Actually, pregnancy is the number one reason. And then just stimulation sometimes. Some women are very sensitive to stimulation of the breast to the point that it will actually cause breast milk to be produced. But that's probably, it sounds like you sort of fall into that category, but we can't say that until you've gone and had the appropriate blood testing done, okay? Okay, so what get, kind of blood testing? Thyroid, prolactin level, 
just general general health screening. Well, what would you say? You tell them the problem and tell them to work just up say, the blood. Uh, it's called galactorrhea. Yeah, I need I need to work up for for breast milk. And is Lord it one Green or both breasts? Star net for I think <laughs> mid seventies. <laughs> Starship galactorrhea. Uh, battleship. <laughs> battleship. Right. Is, right. is it one or both breasts? You know. Um, I'm assuming it's both. All right. So, so we'll get a medical evaluation. I, I suspect you're probably one of those people that just does this in response to stimulation, but it needs to be checked out. Okay. If you could okay. get your. Uh, Ah. All right. <laughs> you know, uh, actually, and thank God, because uh, we got the card up from uh, the last show over there. So, uh, I do know her show, Suddenly Susan. Yes. I do know uh, she's got the uh, Dilbert show yes. as well. Yes. Two, two, two series. series. Two, and uh, she should, because she's got that much talent. Kathy Griffin is here. Smoothies. I'm going to work up some soft swirl later on. There is on. a slush with your name on it, Adam. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, when uh, when Truth said to me uh, a half hour ago, uh, who, who's our guest today? And said, uh, oh, so Kathy. that's the R&D you guys do. Oh, yeah. Just every so often you go, oh, who's coming in 20 minutes? Oh, Drew doesn't mm -hmm. even care. Drew doesn't oh. even know their names half the time when they're oh, out here. True. You can tell because oh, he'll, he'll lean yeah. over and he'll go, I agree with our guest. <laughs> <laughs> But, but he's, I said, Kathy Griffin's coming on, and he went, oh, good, we don't have to do anything. Yeah, but, but I'm no, not going to stop no, talking. He, he meant that you're so entertaining. Yes. There's some gas pain in the ass. Foxy. You got to kind of. Foxy. All right, seriously, how much hotter am I than when you first, would you say like 30% hotter? 35? No, I go, I go higher. All right, don't let me hang about it. I go that higher than 30%. That is sweet. At least. Actually, Adam came up. We, we met at the politically incorrect party. And well, we know week. each other. Don't act like you don't know me, Drew. Well, my, wife might be my wife might be watching. Well, I told Adam, I said, the, the, uh, the club, the women who want Drew to leave his wife club is getting bigger every day. Because this oh, guy yes. is a dreamboat, and you're the bastard. You, but, however. But, but, but Adam came up at this party, and uh, some of the effect of, oh, he's so much, he's not so disgusting anymore. Well, I think that you have actually, yeah, I, you're not as much of a pig as you used to be. Right, and I think right, that... Too. You, over the years, you have beaten sensitivity <laughs> into him. Give it up. Well, thank you for that. I, I was telling Kathy, I'm really a family man without the family. I have the sensibilities oh, yeah. of a family man without the burden of the mouths to feed. All right, uh, Bethany. Hello. You're 18. What's going on? Um, about two weeks ago, me and my boyfriend were fooling around. And in the course of that um, evening, he gave me a humongous hickey on my neck, like right in the front of my neck. It's like the size of a hockey puck. And I've nice. tried everything. Off sides. <laughs> <laughs> and I've tried everything to get rid of it. I mean, spoons, ice, everything, and it's not going away. And it's becoming a real problem because, I mean, I work in retail, and people are, like, looking at my neck like, ew, you slut. <laughs> and I can't do anything to... I know that look, honey. Woo! Uh, and I don't know. I'm wondering maybe if he ruptured something. I'm really concerned about that because oh it's God. been two weeks. Uh, yeah, they, they have a way of hanging around. First thing that yeah. concerns me is that you're dealing with a guy whose mouth is large enough to produce a hockey uh -huh. puck size. Oh, you mean old hockey puck mouth? I know that guy. Yeah, it's like you're dating a grouper or something. <laughs> it's a lot of, lot of mouth on this boy. Yeah. Uh, you got to get yourself a turtleneck. Do you have yeah. a turtleneck? Or a dicky? Yeah, but I mean, neck? she's got a dicky the kids already. Don't know <laughs> she's got a dicky <laughs> sucking right. on her neck. All right. But I mean, at work, I mean, it's a uniform, so I mean, you can't oh. wear a turtleneck to so right. like. Uh, <laughs> here's what we need out of you, Drew. Yeah. Possible medical excuses for sexual problems. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, a book of, of uh, you conceivable could, Well, for excuses. everything, whether, whether it's a, I don't know how you explain, like a crab. That would be difficult. But, you know, for herpes or whatever, you could provide a medical alibi for this. <laughs> and there could be something here. I don't right, know, involving I, I, a lymph node or well, something. Well, I'm more worried when people talk about these giant bruises they get from somebody applying pressure that, that somebody's bruising easily. We had one a, a few weeks ago yeah. where I was convinced mm -hmm. that we had somebody with a, a hemostatic problem. I right. Mean, something with seriously medical. I mean, you know, if you have leukemia, lymphoma, I mean, things that cause easy bruising, Malnutrition, uh, 
there are, there are plenty of medical reasons for this. And I always like to kind of think that through when people are saying they have bruising that uh, won't go away or that it seems extraordinarily large. The, the key question is, are you bru bruising elsewhere? Did you see any little red dots down in your, in your calf area? Uh, any, any little red dots around under the eye conjunctiva, around the tongue or mouth? That kind of thing suggests that there really is a medical problem going on. Beyond that, uh, it's, it's a bruise. I mean, and you just got to deal with the boyfriend that doesn't listen to you or care about your job or your self-esteem. <laughs> yeah, and it's weird when you're young, you, 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 when you're young, you're very much in approving you're having sex right. by uh, trying to leave marks. And then when you get older, you try to hide your trail. <laughs> right. It's, it's kind of weird. You and when you get older, you have a job where you could probably wear a turtleneck. But when you're working at the fast food industry, right. you know, you want to show the hickeys off. And then maybe it's not such a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> maybe it's not so much fun. The, uh... <laughs> The chick from uh, Hot Dog on a Stick looks like Nana from the North, you know, with the big uh, wool sweater pulled up. What they make those chin. girls do with that lemonade machine is sick anyway. There's nothing better. Oh, my. Oh, Adam! <laughs> I'll tell you. I got to tell you, I go to the mall just to watch those chicks. That is so kitty porn. They wear 60s stewardess uniforms. And they pump lemons and they pump at the food that court. Big lemon. I just sit no. there and just peel singles off and just. Uh, <laughs> Just feed them right into the kitty let's, on the tip jar. Go. I applied for a job at Hot Dog on a Stick when I was you 17 You would not be an appropriate old. night I manager. I swear to God, Well, that I is did. inappropriate, Adam. Here, let, me tell, let me explain the deal with Hot Dog that they on a Stick. You, uh, yes, it is. Hot Dog on a Stick, because they wear such outrageous uniforms, pay, or at least this is my theory, <laughs> pay an extra three or four bucks an hour. At the yes, time, I was true. applying for jobs as some loser from the valley. I was 17, 18 years old. I was working at McDonald's the year before, making 265 an hour. The chicks at the hot dog on a stick were making like 650. Raking it in. I said, "This is great. I get to work with a bunch of chicks. I get yeah, to watch her the make the uniform? lemon thing." <laughs> what's that? What's the boy hot dog uniform? I, I don't know, but you didn't the, care. I you just want to see those girls in those crazy outfits. I'd wear anything for five bucks. No, an hour. actually. <laughs> When I was a bank teller, I remember the, uh, the girl to the window to the, my right totally seriously saying to me, you know, I don't even have to keep this job. I can work a hot dog on a stick. Like, she bragged uh, about it. Like, you leave a bank to go work a uh, hot dog on a stick. She, I, she took her walking papers and went to the good gig at hot dog on a stick. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go to the, speaking of all this food, it makes me want to go to the Easy Bake Oven. Oh, okay, Drew. That was smooth. Uh, Silky, yeah. baby. Okay, Alice, what's going on there? Hi. Alice, yeah. Hi, um, I have three female roommates, and one of them saw the other two going at it, and now one of those girls are kind of approaching me, like kissing me on the cheek and hugging me, and I don't, I want them to stay away, and I don't, I don't want to lose her as a friend, because she's a really good friend of mine, and I don't know how to tell her. I don't know what to do. Have you said anything to her so far? No. You can't nope. tell her no? Well, it's... Oh, I see. Let me get this straight. It's a secret that she's a lesbian. The fact that somebody saw her having... I, yes. Okay, so you guys aren't supposed to know that she's a lesbian. Is that right? Yes. But, I, I mean, Alex, There's... you need a little more honesty in this relationship in general, just so you can begin some sort of discussion about where the boundaries are in this relationship, right? I mean, it's somebody you care a lot about. The fact that she's lesbian doesn't bother you. You just don't want the boundaries of the friendship to be violated. And the thing that you're talking about, if you don't know how to address it with her, if she is that good of a friend and will remain a good friend of yours, if you set up any kind of boundary, she should respect she'll respond that. To it. And, and, and also, if she doesn't, she's not the friend that you think right. she is. And she should you know, welcome an opportunity to discuss her sexual orientation. That's important. That is true. Uh, so well, let me ask you this. Let's, let's give her some real specific advice. How would she initiate that discussion? The girl comes over and kisses her on the cheek, and you say, you know what? I really don't like that. That makes me uncomfortable. Let's not do that. And I did, though. Done. I think you're an attractive lady. <laughs> <laughs> and if you would like to swing with these two, I'm in. <laughs> yeah. Everybody, just don't do anything you don't want to do. Don't buy anything you don't want to buy. It, 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 we, have don't strange, do it. we have a strange... You know what I mean? But it's, it's, it's even more afraid. symptomatic of a strange impulse we have as humans, which is to keep dishonesty, you know, sort of in place. You know, I, I don't want to let her know that I know she's a lesbian. But it's also maybe a people-pleasing part of her that doesn't want to say of no to her. Of course. All right. Let's <laughs> David and Lisa, money, wall quiet. of shame. Here we go. <laughs> All right, me and my girlfriend have been together for about nine months now, 
And just lately, like, I've been at work, and she's been masturbating a lot. I mean, like, nonstop, like, a couple times a day, you know, and it's just really bothering me. And I don't know, like, what it is, like, when we're together, when we're, like, making love or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like, she can't have an orgasm, but she can have it when she's doing her own thing, you know? I'm right. just wondering, like, why is that? Like, what can I do about that? And how, how do you know? Is she being, she's just telling you she's yeah. doing it all the time? I, I ask her, and she's like, yeah, yeah, you know, like, just, I can't stop. I, I can't, like, not do it. You all know, right. But it, all right. She, she finds that uh, Australian lifeguard calendar uh, sitting on the bed still warm. And oh, you know, yeah. something's up. All right, that music, which is done by a professional band, means it's time to take a break. When we come back, we'll uh, finish up with David and Lisa. <laughs> Makes her look totally nuts, though. More Love Line <laughs> with uh, Kathy Griffin. Suddenly Susan, Mondays, 8 o'clock, uh, NBC, and Dilbert, Mondays, 8 o'clock, UPN. <laughs> Jeez, you're right up against yourself. Who's David, gonna win? David and Lisa, <laughs> <laughs> uh, your agent. Uh, David and Lisa are in front of the wall of shame. Uh, masturbating Lisa, like crazy. Lisa's doing a lot of <laughs> masturbation while David's at work. Then uh, she's well, not satisfied when David this, comes We've heard home. what David's perception is. Let's hear what Lisa's perception is. What's going on, Lisa? I don't think that I'm doing anything wrong. I mean, I want him just as much, so well, I don't see the problem. And it's not an everyday thing. It's not like that. It's just he but don't like when I do it at all. It's a new change that you're masturbating more often? No. The, so problem, is, the problem is he can't bring her to climax. And, and they're so blaming, yeah, and it they're blaming the masturbation. Does right? that sound yeah. right, Lisa? Exactly. What's the problem, Lisa? Why, why? I don't know. I just can't have an orgasm with him the way that I can in other ways. And that's recently changed? You were able to, or you've never been I've able to? I've never been able to. W- with uh, anybody? It was a hard question. No. Oh, jeez, yeah. Trump, I'm going to run. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever had an orgasm before? Yeah, but just not with sexual intercourse. With anybody with sexual with intercourse? With anyone. Which is normal, right, Lisa? You're 18. That's sort of the... the oh, the what about other us. forms of uh, sexual contact, like uh, oral sex? Um, yes, I have. Yeah, you have. But what about with David? No. Why doesn't David do that? Why isn't David getting busy down there? I don't know. <laughs> David, come on, punch in. Let's go. We got work to do. <laughs> well, with like her toys and everything, like I could like get her off like that sometimes. But I mean, it's just like you know when we don't want to do the toy thing, just like it's it's just David. Your expectation is she should magically have orgasm during intercourse, and that's not the norm for somebody 18 years old, a woman 18 years old. That's an unrealistic expectation of her. Yeah, unfortunately, when they hit their, uh, like, 58, they ham all day long. But by then, you, you're like, uh, back to the toys, baby. <laughs> Let's dust those babies off. I'm going to watch a little TV. All right, so uh, we all know what's going on here, which is uh, David just wants to sort of resent her for not having an orgasm when they're having intercourse. And the reality is, is that's not the way she's built. That's not the way a lot of women are billed, especially younger women, and they have it during oral sex. So instead of complaining, use your mouth for something else. <laughs> All right, David, just All get right. down I there and get busy. That. <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> you know, there are uh, guys that can't get enough of that, and then guys that uh, can, couldn't be led down there with a trail of beer and jerky. <laughs> Always a mystery. Yeah, yeah. Always, it's, I never know. It's, it's like a, it you're is. rolling the dice every time you bring every a new time. guy home. Every time. Are you right? in or you out? <laughs> and they've always got some reason, you know. They've always got a story. When I love I, it because of this. I don't like it because of that. My advice is, yeah. is go to a restaurant with them. You know, because it's important <laughs> to go to dinner before you go home and have sex. Sure. Order them a nice bowl of soup and see if they use the spoon. Ah, if they just lap it up, then home we you're go. in for a good night. Yeah, yeah. Go get about some main course. Just go right home. All right. All right, uh, Tommy is uh, 18 and on the phone. Yeah, uh, I'm totally hooked on cheating. It's, oh. it's kind of like an addiction. It's usually when a girl tells me she loves me, oh. then I'll go out and I'll cheat on her as much as possible for about a month, and I'll call her up, 
Oh. I'll tell her how many times I've cheated on her and how great it was. But now there's a girl I really like, and I've been friends with her for a while. I think she might be the one, and I don't want to screw it up. So my question is, how can I stop cheating? It doesn't say it's hooked on cheating. It's hooked, it's Destroying. Re repelled by closeness, by intimacy, right? It's when a woman tells you she likes you that you screw it all up. Well, usually, right? yeah. Why, why, do why you are you screw sabotaging it? these right. things? And why are you not taking any culpability? Why is he acting like some force that I have no control over is making me cheat? Well, it, it started out, I, tried, I did it once. Out of, uh, I didn't want to, I, you know, really. But I did it, and then I tried it again. It's like I couldn't stop it. But, but All right, let's let go of the couldn't stop thing. Why? Do you understand oh, what that sabotage is no means? no answer. That's a retard answer. <laughs> that first answer. reason is very... Why aren't you taking some responsibility yeah. for what you're doing? Well, I did it once, but I didn't want to do it, and then I couldn't stop. Right. Yeah, that's answering your question with the same thing you just asked him. Right. Please. You got no brain over there. Why? Really. Do you have any reason in your head why you might want to throw these relationships right. out? Why could is be close meaningful? to so scary to you? Well, I don't know. I had a relationship a while ago where a woman did the same thing to me. And Man. that made you so angry you had to go act it out on other women? Was that like your first love? That, yeah, it was my first. And yeah, have you had other major losses in your life? People close to you? Uh, Anybody die or anything like that? No, not any time recent. Well, I'm, I'm not talking about recent. Specifically, I'm not. Well, in my past. What yeah. happened? Well, not really people dying, but I've gone through like four different fathers. Okay. All right. So, mm. so people, ding, close, ding, 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 people ding. close to you leaving. Four fathers? Yeah. People how, do you, close how do you do that? You mean your four fathers? Like <laughs> Abe Lincoln or are you no. talking about four? Was it four score and seven years ago? <laughs> What? How, how come you had so many dads? Well, it, it's stepdads, you know. Your yeah, mother remarried. Your mom. So your mom does a lot of cheating, a lot so of screwing around, a lot of, around, payback, a lot of chaos. No, actually, it was the guys doing it, and my mom just ended up divorcing them. Right. So they were cheating on your mother. Oh. Yeah. And so then your first relationship cheated on you. Exactly. So now you're gonna throw them all in the toilet and never had to have a shot at happiness. Well, I don't want to do it anymore. I mean, I like this girl a lot. And Is this well, girl difficult to hard to get? The one you really like? Uh. She, she's kind of feisty, yeah. Do you think, is she, I bet she's somebody's going to cheat on him. And that's mm. the one she's got to have. Oh. Um, well, Tommy, if, this is, you know, you need, oh boy, how do you well, advise Well, let's this? address, uh, just, I think let's. Kathy's point is the first thing. That if you do want to change this, you have to take responsibility for it. If you get cheated on or not, it doesn't matter. You can eventually find the right person and have a good relationship if you behave yourself. But isn't that the key, though? He's, he's not going to be attracted to a stable, just, available either, person. Even if right. he finds he's going to find a good person or a bad person, if he doesn't behave himself, he's screwed no matter what. It yeah. doesn't matter who cheats on who. Yeah. You have to be responsible in fact, for your probably, own actions. In fact, probably he, he knows he's in a good relationship when he really has a strong impulse to cheat. Right, because... The ones that, that aren't so attracted to him, when he really wants to cheat, that's probably one where he might ah, be... Okay. All right, let's, uh, let's not uh, postulate anymore. Let's just move on. Hey, let me ra wrap it up by saying uh, this. Though. Here we go. Uh, Tommy, 18, you're an idiot. Don't worry. Get the no, hell out you're of you're 18 years old. Don't worry about the this is it relationship. You've got a lot right. more to screw up. Hopefully, you'll screw them up marginally less in the last just a little bit longer as you go on. But you may be 10 years away from being in a place where you can really have a relationship. You come from a lot of chaos, get some therapy, work on that, stop worrying, and, and stop acting on your impulses. Maybe we'll set them up with Margaret Cho. <laughs> <laughs> a mutual friend of ours. There. All right. Oh, yeah. All right, so, Tommy, don't act on your impulse. That's everybody, right. everybody, right. it's okay yeah. not to do something you're compelled to yeah. do. That's right. Yeah, that you, you feel like cheating, wrong. you feel like killing, you feel like neglecting your kids, you feel like shooting up, you feel like doing a lot of things. Hey, don't do it! Yeah. All right, only I should do it. <laughs> Alma. Alma. <laughs> yeah. Um, I have very small breasts, and... All right, we got to move on. <laughs> Adam! We do. That's fine. It's not fair right. to the women with the big breasts. Oh, yeah. Finally, the <laughs> they scales get are tilted. time here. Mm -hmm. Alma, what's Go ahead, up? honey. Yeah, um, and ever since puberty, uh, I have been waiting for them to grow. And my problem is that I've been married for three years, and I feel ashamed of getting naked in front of my husband mm -hmm. because I wear a padded bra, and I won't even strip teeth for him. How is he with uh, with your body? Uh, he says it's okay. He he doesn't mind my my breast. Does, does he not long. mind? Does he feel, make you feel good about yourself? Yeah, he does. But I guess because they've been making fun of me when I was smaller, I was younger, 
and that bothers me a lot. Did you ever have an eating disorder? Yes. Mm. She's got that Drew, voice. Drew. Yeah. Oh, I love when he does that. Yeah. <laughs> when he just knows stuff, it's so hot. Yeah. <laughs> Do more knowing stuff. I love that. I promise he knows stuff about you, too. <laughs> yes. Dirty secrets? <laughs> you don't have a clean one, do you? <laughs> <laughs> but, but, so Alma, this is, this is a more global body image problem, right? Yeah. Were you, were you abused when you were younger, too, in some way? Uh, yes, I was. Okay, so oh. your whole... True, two for two. Oh, my you, God. You nail another one, Kathy's going to have to change her panties. <laughs> So, see, Alma, you understand that this is a more global, not just about your body image, about your whole sense of your self-worth, right? Uh -huh. You're very sensitive to these, what other people think about you because of all this shame and emptiness and difficulty being a separate whole person that to some extent, if not entirely, comes out of this horrible trauma that you grew up with, okay? Mm -hmm. I, I mean, it, well, you know, so like, I, like I'm talking about if the husband's helping or hurting. It sounds like he doesn't. I don't want a he, guy to not mind my body. He probably is hurting just based on Alma's history. She would choose a guy that wouldn't be the most helpful. And well, besides, Alma's never going to have anyone that thinks she's worthy until Alma thinks, thinks she's, she's worthy. Worthy. That's right. worthy. And she has to go all the way back beyond eating disorder to what happened when you were a child and start to deal with that. And then your self esteem will build from it. Right. But, but as, as per usual, hold on, don't clap. I got to say something. Oh, and right. then when I'm done, you can clap for Diane's stuff. And then you clap for my crap later <laughs> in the show. But as per usual, it doesn't really have to do with the size of her breasts. No. no. Uh, right. We, we no. always get the first problem, we dig a little. Right. And then we get to the real problem. Yeah. There's, you went through some horrible trauma. You got to look into that. And, and this is not a, this is not a trivial. You're not going to read a self-help book and magically come out of all this. This is going to be something that you're going to have to work on going forward, make a priority, and, and get some professional guidance and uh, work on for a long time. I mean, what what humans need in order to grow from these sorts of arrests is intimate relationships with other humans. There's now a great body of of or biological scientific information that that sort of uh, describes how the different circuits in the brains in the, in the brain does not even turn on is not even allowed to to activate until you're involved with another person oh, wow. and then the emotional growth can occur yeah and uh, so you need those sorts of real context the does problem that is include pornography when somebody's uh, <laughs> that's not a relationship Adam. Adam. that's uh, <laughs> having one I don't know about them but also I, I, I did want to say to Alma about the um, small breasts you can wear a spaghetti strap without having to wear a bra I cannot, you know, small breasts are fa fabulous for fashion. They are. I, mm -hmm. I have to wear a bra or I get very floppy, I find. Uh, I get yes, floppy. and uh, all, all, all forms of athletics as well. Fa yes. Uh -huh. They can do, go play beach volleyball Light colored till your clothing. feet fall off. All right, so Alma, Rayon. don't focus on the breasts, focus on the past, right? Uh, focus. Save the breasts for me. Uh, yeah. <laughs> on your, your for skin. the experts. Thank you. <laughs> Skippy is 27. Tippy. Hi. Hey. Um, I've been dating the same guy on and off since high school, and about a year ago he proposed, and then shortly after that he found out he was HIV positive. Oh, boy. And um, then shortly after that he started to refuse to have sex with me anymore, and then he called off the wedding. But I still really love him and still want to oh. marry him. So oh. how can I convince him that it's okay oh. for the two of us to still oh. be together? Wow, this is a wow. uh, movie of the week. Oh. All right, Tippy, we got to take a break. We'll give uh, Kathy a chance to go to the bathroom oh, and pass whatever oh, it is. Tippy, 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 why? We'll come back. Commitment that has, and on many levels, life threatening and life changing implications. If you have a question for Loveline, you can call us 24 hours a day. 323 Long charges may apply. More Loveline with the fabulous Kathy Griffin, suddenly Susan, Dilbert, same night. Uh, Matt is on the phone. Matt's penis falls asleep when he's been riding out in the desert too long. And Drew? 
Matt. Yeah. This also happens to people that ride just bicycles for long periods of time, or even spinning. Yeah, people I mean, spin. I've been riding the bicycles spinners. for four years as well. All right. Well, How do you wake it back up? Come on, Drew. There is concern. <laughs> the urologists, I, I'm not sure that there is a consensus about this yet, but there is concern that excessive weight against the seat, a bicycle seat, which is why they advise you to get the padded seats and things for when you're spinning, mm -hmm. can damage a nerve in the perineum, the, the base there called the uh, pudendal nerve. Okay. And that's what supplies nerve information to the penis and gets oh. things back to your head. And uh, it's possible that there could be permanent damage there and, uh, and sexual dysfunction and all, all that ensues with wow. that area is sort of uh, cut off neurologically. You know, you, you, you look kind of dorky when you're riding the mountain yeah, you bike do. and you got the uh, <laughs> six inches worth of yeah, nap go going that, around. And I'll tell you, just as interesting aside, I have dealt with women. When spinning sort of came into being, I saw a, a fl several cases of women with chronic urine infections and, oh. and frequency and urgency oh. to go and you know this uh, what became called interstitial cystitis in their case which basically means we just can't figure out what the hell's going on mm. and when they stopped spinning uh, it all went away so be careful that, that is that is trauma to that area and it's an area that is re relatively sensitive and important to you and uh, pay attention Definitely. so if he doesn't want the big fat seat that he's saying he doesn't want does he just have to curb well it's a little different with motocross because that is really serious trauma to that area they're going over you know the I, yeah, I don't know how you protect yourself. Yeah, it's definitely worse with a motocross. Yeah, I, you just got to pay attention is what I'm telling you. I'm not saying that you go out and ride your bike one day, you're going to have permanent sexual dysfunction, but I'm saying pay attention. If you start okay. getting numbness down there, it's time to stop, okay? Definitely. All, All right. right. Hey, I, I, let me give my take on this spinning nonsense. I see these poor women. <laughs> Poor women just going crazy. Nuts that thing with these looks insane to me. Things. I would never. Yeah, there's a, yeah, have you seen this? Well, we should explain around the country because people it's in big you know, Idaho don't have right. spinning, I don't think. No, because spinning's it, uh, all over the place now. It, it, it's it? a viable condition. I mean, it's a good. But doesn't notion. it just give you I mean, big you, you, you just yeah. sit in one place and, and pedal like some sort of mental patient it's for an, an hour straight. It's an class on a bike. There's right. 40 of you packed into a room the size of a broom <laughs> closet, and you're all leaned over. And then does it actually spin? No. No, you're Why spinning the wheel. Oh, you're spinning oh, okay. the wheel, the right. It's, you look like... Uh, Not that remember, I don't work out. <laughs> <laughs> How does that work again? The old witch... Um, on the Wizard of Oz when the tornado hit, tornado hit and she was in yeah. her basket, she was going, you know, flying around the house. That's what it looks like. It's you're paying 30 bucks a month to stare at the crack of someone's ass for 45 minutes and, too while you're spinning and you'll never catch it. Possibly a, a numb penis. That's what I'm looking at? I'm Big saying no. I think they should hook those bikes up to something. Make, like, you know, make, make something it, happen, make them go somewhere. I know this sounds like sort of retarded, but oh, so much energy. Oh, I see, like electrical, like electrical you can turbine. Light Glendale I see. With <laughs> the fact that those yentas are, are spinning so in, in there. You are so Tucker man in his dream right now. What I, are you I talking really, about? Well, look, look at the, you got a gymnasium. You got the monitors on every wall. You got the stereo system. You got the lighting. Power it. You hook right. the thing up yeah, to the spinning class. Oh, it's a permanent generator. Right, yeah, you just totally. keep going, and it starts getting a little dim in the locker, and you go back up in your tower. Hey, ladies, Mac Chanel, let's go. I'm trying to hit the shower. I can't find my penis. All right. <laughs> Which is a problem I've had myself. No. All right, right Drew, hand. hold the book up, would you? Love her? <laughs> get, your, get your thumb out of my ear. That's it. That's our book. This is fantastic reading, even for... Um, People that don't read? I thought you were going to say even for the illiterate population. That's what is right. the book? There you go. <laughs> Dr. Drew and Adam. That's the book. right. It's a survival guide to life and love. It is fantastic. Well, you two are much more handsome in this picture. I think yes. we get Annie Leibovitz. We do a whole Vanity Fair shoot. Thank you. We've been saying <laughs> that for years. All right, Candy Griffin, everybody. <laughs> Suddenly Susan. Gilbert. Monday night, 8 o'clock, NBC UPN. And until next time, this is Adam Carolla for Dr. Drew. Diane Bach. Say mahalo.
Stone Stanley Productions. Yeah. Cool.